Why, hello there, everybody. We are going to be reading The Iliad today, translated by Robert Fagels. <clears throat> we are on book 19. The champion arms for battle. We're getting down to the juicy bits of the book. I believe there are only... Twenty-four books. So we're on nineteen, twenty, four more, six books left. We're getting pretty close. Uh so what happened thus far most recently, Achilles' close friend, Patroclus, took Achilles' armor and foolishly got too close to Troy. He died. Achilles was wrought with fear and terror and anger and, you know, a lot of negative emotions. His mom, a demigod or a goddess or a spirit, a nerid, uh, was like, don't worry, sweetheart. I'm going to get you a big shield. I'm going to get you the best shield that you can possibly get. And she got the gods to make Achilles a best shield ever. So our current chapter. The champion arms for battle. My predictions is that this is going to be all about silver clasps and supple leathers and burnished bronze and sharpened spears and well made this and finally made that. And we're just going to have a, what do you call them? Magical girl transformation of Achilles from woe is me, Agamemnon slighted me into I'm a glorious magical girl ready for to kill everything. That's what I think this chapter is going to be about, but we're going to find out together because it's been a long time and I don't remember. As dawn rose up in her golden robe from ocean's tides, bringing light to immortal gods and mortal men, Thetis spread Hephaestus's gifts down to the ships. She found her beloved son lying face down, embracing Patroclus's body, sobbing, wailing, and round him crowded troops of mourning comrades. As the glistening goddess moved among them now and seized Achilles' hand and urged him, spoke his name, my child, leave your friends to lie there dead. We must, though it breaks our hearts. The will of the gods has crushed him once for all. But here, Achilles, accept this glorious armor. Look, a gift from the god of fire, burnished bright, finer than any mortal has ever borne across his back. And the goddess laid down the armor at Achilles' feet, and the gear clashed out in all its blazoned glory. A tremor ran through all the Myrmidon ranks. None dared to look straight at the glare. Each fighter shrank away, not Achilles. The more he gazed, the deeper his anger went, his eyes flashing under his eyelids, fierce as fire, exulting, holding the god's shining gifts in his hands. And once he'd thrilled his heart with looking hard at the armor's well-worn beauty, he turned to his mother, winged words flying, Mother, armor sent me by, sent by the god. You're right. Only immortals could forge such work. No man on earth could ever bring it off. By now, by heaven, I'll arm and go to war. But all the while my blood runs cold with fear. Minoiteus is fighting, son. The carrion, the carrion blowflies will settle into his wounds, gouged deep by the bronze. Worms will breed and seethe, defile the man's corpse. His life's ripped out. His flesh may rot to nothing. But glistening-footed Thetis reassured him, Oh, my child, wipe these worries from your mind. I'll find a way to protect him from those swarms, the vicious flies that devour men who fall in battle. He could lie there dead till a year has run its course and his flesh will still stand firm, even fresher than now. So go and call the Argive warriors to muster. Renounce your rage at the proud commander Agamemnon, then arm for battle quickly. Don your fighting power. With that, she breathes in her son tremendous courage that instilled in Patroclus's nostrils fresh ambrosia, blood-red nectar too, to make his flesh stand firm. 
a brilliant Achilles strode along the surf, crying his piercing cry, and roused Achaean warriors. Even those who'd kept to the beaches, beached ships till now, the helmsmen who handled the heavy steering oars, the stewards left on board to deal out rations, even the trooped, even they trooped to the muster. Great Achilles, who held back from the brutal fighting so long, had just come blazing forth. And along came two aides of Ares limping in, the battle-hearted Tydeus, flanked by the good Odysseus leaning on their spears, still bearing painful wounds, and slowly found their seats in the front ranks. And the lord of men, Agamemnon, came in last of all. Weighed down by the wound he took in the rough charge when Kuhn, son of Enantor, slashed his arm with bronze. And now, as all the Achaean armies massed together, the swift runner Achilles rose among them, asking, Agamemnon, was it better for both of us, after all, for you and me to rage at each other, raked by anguish, consumed by heart-strick strife, all for a young girl? If only Artemis had cut her down at the ships with one quick shaft, the day I destroyed Lyneriasus, chose her as my prize. How many fewer friends had gnawed the dust of the wide world, brought down by enemy hands, while I raged on and on? Better? Yes, for Hector and Hector's Trojans, not for the Argives. For years to come, I think, they will remember the feud that flared between us both for years to come. It's been like 3,000 years and we're still talking about their feud. Oh my god. Oh my god. For years to come. Where was it? Where was it? Hold on. Blah, 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 blah. For years to come, I think, they will remember the feud that flared between us both. Enough. Let bygones be bygones. Done is done. Despite my anguish, I will beat it down. The fury mounting inside me, down by force. Now, by God, I call a halt to all my anger. It's working to keep on raging, heart inflamed forever. I'm sorry, it's wrong to keep on raging, heart inflamed forever. Quickly, drive our long-haired Achaeans to battle now, so I can go at the Trojans once again and test their strength and see if they'll still long to camp the night at the ships. They'll gladly sink to a knee and rest at home, I'd say. Whoever comes through alive from the heart of combat out from under my spear... Welcome, rousing words, and Achaeans at arms are roared out with joy to hear the gathered, the great-hearted Achilles swearing off his rage. Now it was King Agamemnon's turn to address them. He rose from his seat, not moving towards the center. The lord of men spoke out from where he stood. My friends, fighting Danans, aides of Ares, when a man stands up to speak, it's well to listen not to interrupt him, the only courteous thing. Even the finest speaker finds intrusions hard, yet how can a person hear or say a word? This howling din could drown out the clearest voice. But I will declare my innermost feelings to Achilles. And you, the rest of you Argives, listen closely. Every man of you here, mark each word I say. Often, the armies brought this matter up against me. They would revile me in public. But I am not to blame. Zeus and fate and the fury stalking through the night, they are the ones who drove this savage madness in my heart. That day in assembly when I seized Achilles' prize, on my own authority, true, but what could I do? The god impe A god impels all things to their fulfillment. Ruin, eldest daughter of Zeus, she blinds us all, that fatal madness. She, with those delicate feet of hers, never touching the earth, gliding over the heads of men to trap us all. She entangles one man, now another. 
Why? She and her frenzy blinded Zeus one time. Highest, greatest of men and gods, they say. Even Father Zeus. Hera deceived him blind, feminine as she is, and only armed with guile that day in Thebes ringed the, with tower on tower. Alchemna was poised to bear invincible Hercules. So proud, father declared to all immortals. Hear me, all you gods and goddesses too, as I proclaim what's brooding deep inside me. Today, the goddess of birth, pangs, and labor will bring uh, to light a human child, a man child, born of the stock of men who springs from my blood, one who will lord it over all who dwell around him. But teeming with treachery, noble Hera set her trap. You will prove a liar. When time come... When the time arrives to crown your words with action, come now, my Olympian, swear your inviolate oath that he shall lord it over all who dwell around him. That child who drops between a woman's knees today, born of the stock of men who spring from Zeus's blood, and Zeus suspected nothing, not a word of treachery. He swore his mighty oath, blinded from that hour on. Speeding down in a flash from Mount Olympus's summit, Hera reached Achaean Argos in no time, where she knew for a fact the hardy wife of Stenethelus, Perseus' own son, was about to bear her child, but only seven months gone. So into the light, Queen Hera brought the baby, two months shy, and the goddess stopped Olmeca's hour of birth. She held back the Lady of Labor's birthing pangs and rushed in person to give the word to Zeus. Zeus! Father, Lord of the Lightning Bolt, here's a piece of news to warm your heart. Today, an illustrious son is born to rule the Argives. Rithinius, son of Stenethelus, descendant of Perseus. He is born of your own stock into mortal blood. It is only right for him to rule the Argives. With that, a stab of agony struck his deep heart. Suddenly realized, suddenly seizing ruin by her glossy oiled braids, he was furious, raging. Now he swore his inviolate oath, and never again would she return to Olympus's starry skies. That maddening goddess, ruin, ruin who blinds us all. With that, he whirled her round in his massive hand and flung her out of the brilliant star starry skies, and she soon found herself in the world of men. But Zeus could never think of ruin without a groan whenever he saw Hercules. His own dear son endured some uh, his own dear son endure some shameful labor Eurythalis forced upon him. And so with me, I tell you. <laughs> Agamemnon. Years of fighting at Troy. Years of Achilles, the greatest fighter in the world, hanging out, just being like, Agamemnon took my slave, and I'm not happy about it. And when Achilles finally is like, all right, I'm giving it up, let's do it. Agamemnon's like, yeah, that wasn't a great idea. You remember that time that Zeus got tricked by Hera via the goddess of ruin and like his son Hercules, the legendary adventurer? Like, remember all that shit went down? Same thing happened to me. I got tricked by Ruin. I'm so sorry, Achilles. Like, the gods work in mysterious ways, and they fucked this up for me. I was just another person involved in this, you know. Just like Zeus, I got tricked by Ruin. Ha ha ha, not my fault. What? What a, what a guy. And so with me, I tell you, when tall Hector with that flashing helmet of his kept slaughtering Argives pinned against our ships, how could I once forget that madness, that frenzy, the ruin that blinded me from that first day? But since I blinded, uh, but since I was blinded and Zeus stole my wits, I am intent on setting things right at once. Mm -hmm. I'll give that priceless ransom paid for friendship. Gear for battle now, and rouse the rest of your armies. As for the gifts, here I am to produce them all. All that good Odysseus promised you in full. The other day, when he approached your tents, or if you'd prefer, hold off a moment now, much as your heart would spur you unto war, aids will fetch that treasure trove from my ship. They'll bring it here to you, so you can behold what hoard I give to set your heart at peace.
But the swift runner Achilles broke in sharply. Field Marshal Atreides, our trides, Lord of Men Agamemnon, produce all the gifts you like as you see fit, or keep them back. It's up to you. But now, quickly call up the wild joy of war at once. It's wrong to malinger here and talk, wasting time. Our great work lies all before us still to do. Just as you see Achilles charging the front once more, hurling his bronze spear, smashing Troy's battalions, so each of you remember to battle down your man. But Odysseus is fine as tactics, answered firmly, not so quickly, brave as you are, godlike Achilles. Achaea's troops are hungry. Don't drive them against Troy to fight the Trojans. It's no quick skirmish shaping. Once the massed formations of men begin to clash with a good with a god breathing fury and both sides at once. No, 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 no. Command them now to take their food and wine by the fast ships. A soldier's strength and nerve. No fighter can battle all day long, cut and thrust till the sun goes down if he's starved for food. Even though his courage may blaze up for combat, his limbs will turn to lead before he knows it. Thirst and hunger will overtake him quickly. His knees will cave in as a man struggles on. But the one who takes his fill of food and wine before he grapples enemies full force, dawn to dusk in his heart. Uh, no, the heart in his chest keeps pounding fresh with courage, nor do his legs give out till all break off from battle. Come, dismiss your ranks. Have them make their meal. As for the gifts, let the king of men, Agamemnon, have the lot have the lot of them hauled amidst our muster, so all the troops can see the trove themselves, and you, Achilles, can warm your heart. And let the king stand up before the entire army. Let Agamemnon swear to you his solemn binding oath. He never mounted her bed, never once made love with her. The natural thing, my lord, men and women joined. And you, Achilles, show some human kindness too in your own heart. Then, as a peace offering, let him present you a lavish feast in his tents, so you won't lack your just desserts at, that, at last. And you, great son of Atreus, you be more just to others from now on. It is no disgrace for a king to appease a man when the king himself was the first to give offense. The lord of men, Agamemnon, answered warmly, Son of Laertes, I delight to hear your counsel. You have covered it all fairly, point by point. I'll gladly swear your oath. The spirit moves me now. Nor will I break the oath in the eyes of any god. But let Achilles remain here for the moment, much as his heart would race him on to war. The rest remain here too, all in strict formation, till the treasure trove is hauled forth from my tents, and we can seal our binding oaths in blood. And you, Odysseus, I tell you, I command you, Pick out young men, the best in our joint forces. Bring forth the gifts from my ship, all we promised Achilles just the other day. And bring the women too. Here in the presence of our united armed conting contingents, let Talthibius Tal quickly prepare a wild boar for me. We must sacrifice to the son and father Zeus. But the swift runner Achilles interjected, Field Marshal Atrides, Lord of Men Agamemnon, better busy yourself with that some other time. When a sudden lull and the fighting lets us rest and the fury is not such fire inside my heart, now our men are lying mauled on the field. All that Hector the son of Priam overwhelmed when Zeus was handing Hector his high glory, but you, you and Odysseus urge us to banquet, to a banquet. I, by God, I'll drive our Argives into battle now! Starving, famished, and only then, when the sun goes down, lay on a handsome feast, once we've avenged our shame. Before then, let me at least neither food nor drink will travel down my throat, not with my friend dead there in my shelter, torn to shreds by sharp bronze, his feet turned to the door, stretched out for burial, round his comrades mourning? You talk of food? 
I have no taste for food. What I really crave is slaughter and blood and the choking groans of men. But Odysseus, cool tactician, tried to calm him. Achilles, son of Peleus, greatest of the Achaeans, greater than I, stronger than spears by no small edge, yet... I might just surpass you in season judgment by quite a lot since I have years on you and I know the world much better. <laughs> so let your heart be swayed by what I have to say. Now, fighting men will sicken a battle quickly. The more dead husks the bronze strews on the ground, the sparser the harvest then. When Zeus Almighty tips the scales, the side of battle turns. That great steward on high who rules our moral wars, you want the men to grieve for the dead by starving? Impossible. Too many falling day after day. Battalions. When we think, when when could we find breathing space from fasting? No, we must steal our hearts, bury our dead with tears for the day they die, not one day more. And all those left alive after the hateful carnage remember food and drink. So all the more fiercely we can fight our enemies nonstop. No mercy, durable as bronze that wraps our bodies. Let no one hold back now, waiting for their summons. These are your summons. Pain and death to the man who skulks beside the ships. Now, all in a mass, drive hard against them, rousing battering war against those stallion-breaking Trojans. Did I skip a paragraph? No, that's still Odysseus. He led an escort formed of the brave old soldier Nestor's sons, Magus the son of Phaleus, Merones and Theos, Lycomedes, the son of Creon, Menippus, too. Off they went to the tents of Agamemnon. A few sharp commands, then the work was done. Seven tripods hauled from the tents as promised. Twenty burnished cauldrons, a dozen massive stallions. They quickly brought out women, flawless, skilled in crafts. Seven, and Briseis in all her beauty made the eighth. Then Odysseus weighed out ten full bars of gold and led the princes back, laden with other gifts, and they set them down amid the meeting grounds, Agamemnon rose to his feet. The crier to Talithibus, his voice as clear as a god's. Um, holding the boar in his arms, flanked the great commander, and Atreus' son drew forth the dagger, always slung in his battle sword's sheath. This... He cut some hairs from the boar's head, first tufts to start the right, and then, lifting up his arms, Zeus he pray on high he prayed, while the armies held fast to their seats in silence, all by rank and file listening to their king. He scanned the vaulting skies as his voice rang in prayer, Zeus be my witness, first the highest, best of gods, then earth. The sun, the furies stalking the world below to wreck ravage on the dead who broke their oaths. I swear I never laid a hand on the girl Briseis, never forced her to serve my lust in bed or perform some other task. Briseis remains untouched within my tents. True, if a word of what I say is falsely sworn, may the gods deal out such blows to me, the agonies as they deal out to men who break sworn oaths and take their names in vain. On those terms, he dragged his ruthless dagger across the boar's throat. Talithibus whirled the carcass around his head and slung it into the yawning gulf of the, gra of the gray sea for the swarming fish to eat. Then Prince Achilles stood and addressed the Argives keen for battle. Father Zeus, great are the binding fren blinding frenzies you deal out to men. If not, I swear, our trides could never have roused the fury in me. The rage that would not die, or wrenched the girl away against my will. Stubborn, implacable man. Zeus, somehow, was bent on this awesome slaughter of Achaeans. Go now, take your meal, the sooner to bring on war. This brusque command dispersed the muster quickly. The contingents scattered, each to its own ship. Exultant Myrmidons took charge of the gifts and bore them off to the royal captain's moorings. They stowed them safe in his shelter, settled the women, and proud henchmen drove the teams to his herds. 
and so Briseis returned, like golden Aphrodite. But when she saw Patroclus lying torn by the bronze, she flung herself on his body, gave a piercing cry, and with both hands clawing deep at her breasts, her soft throat and lovely face, she sobbed, a woman like a goddess in her grief. Patroclus, dearest joy of my heart, my Howard breaking heart, I left you alive that day, I left these shelters, now I come back to find you fallen, captain of armies. So grief gives way to grief, my life, oh, so grief gives way to leaf. My life one endless sorrow, the husband to whom my father and noble mother gave me. I saw him torn by sharp blades, uh, by sharp bronze before our city. And my three brothers, a single more of mother Boroth, bore us. My brothers, how I loved you, all went down to death on the same day. Probably to Patroclus and Achilles. But Patroclus, you who would not let me weep after you killed my brothers... Not when swift Achilles cut my husband down. Not when he plundered my lord Manny's the city. Not even weep. No, again and again you vowed you'd make me god like Achilles' lawful wedded wife. You would sail me west in your warships home to Pythia, and there with the Myrmidons hold my marriage feast. So now I mourn your death. I will never stop. You were always kind. Wow. Her voice rang out in teeth. Yeah, Patroclus and Achilles captured her. They killed her brothers. They killed her husband. They looted her city. They probably killed her father, too. I dropped my book. But somehow, the story gets written down as she's, like, all about Patroclus. You know. You were always kind. Her voice rang out in tears, and the women wailed in answer, grief for Patroclus calling forth each woman's private sorrows. But Achaea's warlords clustered round Achilles, begging him to eat. He only spurned them, groaning, I beg of you, if any comrade will hear me out in this, stop pressing me now to glut myself with food and drink. Now such painful grief has come and struck my heart, I'll hold out till the sun goes down, enduring, fasting, despite your appeals. His voice was so firm that Achilles caused the other kings to scatter. By the two, but the two Artrides stay. The two Atra Atridae stayed, and good Odysseus, Nestor, Artemenius, Phoenix, the old charioteer, all trying to comfort Achilles deep in his sorrow. But no comfort could reach the fighter's heart till he went striding into the jaws of bloody war. The memory swept over him, sighs heaved, sighs heaved from his depths as Achilles burst forth. Ah, uh, God, time and again, my doomed, my dearest friend, would you set before us a seasoned meal yourself, here in our tents in your quick and expert way, when our guy forces rush to fight the Trojans, stampeding the, those breakers of horses, of horses into rout? But now you lie before me, hacked to pieces here, while my heart within me fasts from food and drink through stories, though stores inside are full. I'm sick with longing for you. There is no more shattering blow that I could suffer, not even if I should learn of my own father's death, who, this moment, is weeping warm tears in Pythia. I know it, bereft of a son as loved as this, and here I am in a distant land fighting Trojans and all that blood-chilling horror, Helen, or the death of my dear son reared for me in Skyros, if Prince Neo... Neo... Ptolemus is still among the living. Now, nah, till now I had hoped, hoped with all my heart that I would die alone, that I alone would die far from the stallion land of Argos here in Troy. But you, Patroclus, would journey back to Pythia, and then you'd ferry Neopatolius home from Skyros, back in your fast in your black ship, and show him all my wealth, my serving men, my great house with the high vaulted roof. For father, I fear, 
If he's not dead and buried yet, just clings, perhaps, to his last breath of life, ground down now by the hateful siege of years, waiting day after day for painful news of me until he learns his only son is dead. <sighs> his voice rang out in tears, and the warlords mourned in answer, each remembering those he had left behind at home. Seeing their grief, the father, filled with pity, quickly turned to Athena with winged words. My child, have you abandoned him forever? Your favorite man of war? Is it all lost now? No more care for Achilles left inside your heart? There he huddles before his curved, beaked ships, racked with guilt for his dead, uh, dear friend while others scatter, settling down to their meals? He's fasting, never fed. Go, run and instill some nectar and sweet ambrosia deep within his chest. Stave off his hunger now. So he urged Athena, already poised for action. Down the sky, she swooped through the clear, bright air like a shrieking, sharp-winged hawk. And while Achaeans, armed, quickly armed throughout the encampment, she instilled some nectar and sweet ambrosia deep in Achilles' chest, so the stabbing pangs of hunger could not sap his knees. Then back to her mighty father's sturdy halls she went as troops moved out, pouring out of the fast trim ships. Thick and fast as the snow comes, swirling down from Zeus, frozen sharp when the north wind blow born in heavens blasts it on. So massed, so dense, the glistening burnished helmets shone, streaming out from the ships, when shields and jutting bo bosses, breastplates we welded front and black along the ashen spears. The glory of the armor lit the skies, and the whole earth laughed. Rippling under the glittering of bronze, thunder resonating under trampling feet of armies, and in their midst the brilliant Achilles began to arm for battle. So a sound of grinding came from the fighter's teeth. His eyes blazed forth in searing points of fire. Unbearable grief came surging through his heart, and now... Bursting with rage against the men of Troy, he donned to Faustus' gift, magnificent armor, the god of fire forged with all his labor. First, he wrapped the legs with well-made greaves, fastened behind the eels with silver ankle clasps. Next, he strapped the... Hold on, we... This is definitely magical girl transformation sequence. Um... We're going to do this. We're going to do this one right. right. We're going to get the appropriate. Not quite sure this is appropriate enough. First, he wrapped his legs with well-made greaves, fastened behind his heels with silver ankle clasps. Next, he strapped the breastplate round his chest. Then over his shoulder, Achilles slung his sword, the fine bronze blade with its silver-studded hilt. Then hoisted the massive shield, flashing far and wide like a full round moon, and gleaming bright as the light that reaches sailors out at sea, the flare of a watch fire burning strong in a lonely sheepfold up some mountain slope when a gale winds hurl the crew that fights against them far over the fish swam swarming sea far from loved ones so the gleam from achilles as well bla blazoned shield shot up and hit the skies then lifting his rugged helmet he set it down on his brows and the horsehair crest shone like a star and the waving gold plume shook that Hephaestus drove and bristling thick along its ridge and brilliant Achilles tested himself in all his gear Achilles spun in his heels to see it fitted tightly see if his shining limbs ran free within it yes and it felt like buoyant wings lifting the great captain and then last achilles drew his father's spear right from its socket stand weighted heavy tough no other achaean fighter could heft that shaft only achilles had the skill to wield it pelian ash it was a gift to his father peleus presented by chiron once hewn on pelian's crest to be the death of heroes now the war team 
Alchemists and Automedion worked to yoke them quickly. They cinched the supple breast straps round their chests, and driving the bridle irons home between their jaws, pulled the reins taut to the bolted chariot. Seizing a glinting whip, the first on the hand grip, Automedion leapt aboard behind the team, and behind him Achilles struck his stance, helmed for battle now, glittering in his armor like the sun astride the skies, his ringing daunting voice commanding his father's horses ronin beauty and charger illustrious foals of lightfoot try hard do better this time bring your chariot here home alive to his waiting argive comrades once we're through the fighting don't leave achilles there on the battlefield as you left patroclus dead and Ronan Beauty, the horse with flashing hoofs, spoke up from under the yoke, bowing his head low. So his full name came streaming down the yoke pads, down along the yoke to sweep the ground. The white-armed goddess Athena gave the horse voice. Yes! <laughs> we will save your life! This time too, master mighty Achilles! But the day of death already hovers near, and we are not to blame. But a god, a great god is, and a strong force of fate. <laughs> not, though, not through our want of speed or any lack of care did the Trojans strip the armor off Patroclus' back. It was all that matchless god, sleek-haired Leoto's son. He killed him among the champions and handed Hector glory. Our team could race with the rush of the west wind. <laughs> the strongest swifted blast on earth. Then you say, still you are doomed to die by force, Achilles, cut down by a deathless god and mortal man. The horse said no more. The furies struck him dumb. But the fiery runner Achilles burst out in anger. Why, Roan Beauty, why prophesize my doom? Don't waste your breath. I, I know, well I know, I am destined to die here. Far from my dear father. Far from mother, but all the same, I will never stop till I drive the Trojans to their bloody fill of war. A high, stabbing cry, and out in the front ranks, he drove his plunging stallions. <laughs> his horse talks to him. I don't know why. It tickles me so that Athena, white, white armed Athena, I'm sorry, letting, giving the horse voice just so the horse can say like, whoa, bro, it's not my fault. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why was that necessary for the story? I guess we needed one last like reminder of Achilles' prophecy that he's going to die out there. And I guess the horse prophesizing to him that he's going to die is, you know, fun. But I also imagine the those two other people who are going to, like, run the chariot for him, who are going to, like, drive it, are just, like, standing around. And, <laughs> and when Achilles is like, you horse, don't leave me out there to die like you left Patroclus. And the horse is like, but Achilles, I didn't leave him to die. It's all the gods doing. Besides, you're going to die. And Achilles is like, hey, don't tell me what I already know. I know I'm already going to die out there. Meanwhile, the guy at the reins who's supposed to be driving the chariot's like, what the fuck is a talking horse? Or maybe the horse is only talking to Achilles, but Achilles is talking back to the horse. It's like the horse is prophesizing my death. Like, would you really want to ride out with Achilles in his chariot when the horse just told him he's going to die? When the horse speaks to Achilles and is like, Achilles, you're going to die out there. And he's like, I know, buddy. I know, but we got to beat the Trojans. And you're like standing next to him on the chariot, getting ready to drive it into battle. <laughs> Oh, that was a beautiful thing. Yeah, the horse's perspective really it was key. You know, that was um an absolutely necessary piece of information that we were getting there. Oh, book twenty. 
There are only five books left. We're not going to read any more today. But maybe if there's five left, we can do like two and one and two or something and be done with this book soon. I mean, if we have to do one and one and one and one and one, we can kobold our way through it if we need to. But it would be nice to, I think, I think some of those chapters will be better doubled up. So we'll, we'll catch them next time. Uh, yes, Pigeon. You are a peasant. But you knew that already, and that's why you named yourself Pigeon. So, yeah. Wow, Timur, wow. All right, that was it for the Iliad. We're gonna go. That was great. That was a, a nice little 40 minutes of, of the Iliad there. That was perfect. It's exactly the amount of Iliad I could, uh, I could handle right now. Um, and we will be back later tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. We're not back tomorrow at all. Sunday for Embers of the Wild. No, Monday, Tuesday. God, the week just keeps flying by. 